welcome to Denny's Fry Stadium, the host of the quarterfinals of the ACT Championship. A matchup of the number one team in all the land, your Demon Deacons, taking on the Louisville Cardinals. Hi everybody, I'm Ty Collins, and the November rain has tapered off here in the Camel City, and a maybe a big semifinal matchup could be in the making if Wake Forest wins today. Able to take on UVA or Notre Dame. But don't tell Coach Moose that because these Deeks are focused only on the team in red. If they win today, it'll be a good one because you have to remember back in the preseason, Louisville was preseason picked to be number one in the Atlantic Division. Well, that has changed. The Deeks are number one, one in RPI, and we've got them on the menu again. A second matchup in eight days. Grab a seat, get ready. ACC quarterfinals are coming up here on WakeForestSports.com. And welcome. We're starting off right away, uh, right at one minute till one o'clock. And it is Wake Forest, the number one team in all the land, taking on Louisville. Second meeting between these two teams in eight days. Quickly, Louisville getting off into the 18. Well saved by Alec Farrell. Mike Forrest going with, of course, Alec Farrell in the goal. Chris Reeves, Baccaro, Ja'Cory Hayes, Dunwell, Hawes, Inharks. Hunter Bandy, Hayden Partain, Jack Harrison, and Sam Rabin. I'll get the start here for this quarterfinal matchup. A little trying to get off to a quick start. They tried to do that in the matchup on October 30th, and Wake Forest was the team that did that. Three goals in the first 17 minutes. And that matchup there up in Louisville. Chris Reeves over there on the left side. Oh, with a lot of time and space to figure out where he's going to go. Trying to find Hayes. But Carroll inside the box. This could be dangerous. And Hayes got a little elbow to the head and not too happy with that. Cardinal goings, Cardinal's going with Tate Schmidt up top, number 22, the freshman. He didn't get to start October 30th game, but he's starting today. Partain. Got the Deeks on track. In that first game on October 30th with two early goals back to back. Dunwell moving it to the back. Harrison leading the ACC in assists. Partain out to the left side. Bandy trying to go inside to Hayes. Hayes inside the box looking for Baccaro. Baccaro looks for a one touch. Here's a shot by Harks and deflected by the Cardinals. Dunwell now out to the left. When Hayes, Bandy, Bandy giving chase will let it trickle out of bounds. For a Wake Forest throw in quickly over to Partain. Louisville comes back out with it. Well, miss Link up there. Hawes gets the ball right back. Harrison now moving it himself, going against three. Now four Louisville defenders. Now at the goal line, almost put in. 
and pushed out by the Louisville defense. Here could be a header by Baccaro. Just timed it. The time was a little off. Reeves moves it up right past the 50. Dunwall's going to check on Hawes. He'll use him. Hawes looking for the long ball. He's going to try to slot it through to Hayes. Schmidt. Hawes now doing a little volley over to the left side to Bandy. Bandy. Now moving it out to back to Reeves. Reeves immediately going to Harks. Hawes. Harrison calling for it. Now go inside to Hayes. Harrison with a lot of space trying to find where he's going to go. And a great defensive play by Louisville trying to go connect with Harks. Here comes Harrison. Harrison right around. Looking for the in swing. Well defended by Louisville. That was Joey Kunko, the sophomore. And it's Jack Harrison with the shot. Jack Harrison now will take the quarter kick. A lot of movement down there by Dunwell. Hand is up. And volleyed out by Louisville. Mandy now here on the right side. They switch fields to Partain. Louisville not putting a lot of pressure on Wake early in this match. And Wake has controlled the pace so far. And I go along trying to lay it off. Had a miscommunication there. Wake will take the ball right back. Arks. Trying to put a spell right through. Hayes got in front of it. Pushes it over to Becker. A little too out in, far in front of him. And Hayes is a little upset with himself. Dating back to 2014, the Deeks are 23-2 and here at Spry. I hope to get win 21 here this afternoon. Tio Jamuo, a goalkeeper from France, the freshman. Putting right over the 50 yard line. He throw in for Louisville. Kick awarded to Louisville. Be taken by Jack Gayton. Louisville loaded over to the right side. Here comes the bender inside the box and headed out by Baccaro. Gayton now trying to switch field and great pressure by Jack Harrison. The sensational freshman from England. Louisville now on the attack. Tries to put one inside the box, but deflected by Bandy and out for a corner kick for Louisville.
four or five Louisville players right there at the PK strike. An option for the short ball too. Bending near post, deflection, a great save by Farrell. Farrell watched it all the way, just like he has been doing all season long for the Deeks. Well served by Farrell. Number eight in the nation in save percentage. Six shutouts and 13 matches for Alec Farrell. Shared time with Andrew Harris, but that kind of pumped him up to have a phenomenal historic season so far. Weaver on the attack on the far right. Well, tripped up, but Wake Forest will get the throw in. It was Andrew Brody, the junior midfielder from Orlando, Florida, on that far side. Father played professionally for the Colorado Foxes. Oh, he's checked on Harrison, but will keep him himself. It's not in the game. He is injured for the season. They're getting injured against Georgia State. So you see a little different back line going right to Harks. Tough ball for Harks to play. Got tripped up. The whistle is not blown. Looks like he tripped over the ball. Ball is looking for someone to come to. There's Harks. Harks, nice move. Pushes that little two out in front of him. Brings it back to Dunwell. Partain. Trying to connect with Harks, and Louisville comes back out with it. Strong for Louisville. And pressured by two Deacons, and a nice layoff to Harrison. Let's see if Harrison takes a shot. Right outside of the 18, in the back of the net, Wake Forest goes on top, 1-0. Here with 33 minutes left to play in the first half. He set it up just nicely. Thought Harrison was going to take a go early, but he set up on a platter and put it in the back of the net, and the Deeks are up 1-0. Nice shot just off to the right of Tio Zamuyo. And Harrison gets another goal on his resume for his freshman season. Goal number eight. For the freshman. Eight goals and 11 assists so far. Not too shabby. Oh, is now to Harrison doing a 1 2. Looking for a handball. Won't get it. Good control. Ah, uh, Johnson. Johnson again will push it in the middle. Great pressure by Baccaro. Making that back line work and almost got it as he pushed the Graffin right off the ball a little bit. Here's a long ball for Louisville and taken away by Rabin, the freshman. Strong looking for someone to come to. Looks like he's not going to do the honors for the throw in. And the tall Danny Reynolds quickly into Strong.
Carroll backing off the pressure. And Louisville trying to create some kind of attack here on the left side. Well played by Hawes. Watch Daniel Johnson the whole way. Louisville get a throw in down on this quarter of the field. Quickly putting a bender inside the 18. Clear it out, but picked up by DeGraffin right and he'll change fields. The first game, we were one that their strategy was to keep it out wide. It didn't exactly work because Mike Forrest scored three goals in 17 minutes. See what the strategy is here. Leaks with a lot of pressure. Harrison scoops it up. And a check on Becquero. He's going to take it himself. Cuts into the middle of the field. Trying to lay it off to Partain. But the window closed immediately. Now Louisville sits it in the midfield. Trying to go on the right flank. Louisville. This could be a chance for the Cardinals inside the 18. A well-played tackle. Got all ball. And the fans here at Spry are excited about that one. So watch the replay. Right inside the box. Dangerous, dangerous play. But that is a textbook tackle. Over there on that far side. Well done by Bandy. Dunwell checks his surrounding. And has some space, he'll take it himself. Hawes moves into space. Harrison. Going one-on-one. -on -one. But Johnson. And a save by the freshman. Transfer from Florida Atlantic. Johnson cuts back into the middle. With it comes Hayes. Hayes taking his time to getting his team back up here towards past the 50. He'll switch fields to Hawes. Hawes settles it. He'll slot one to Jack Harrison. Harrison speeding right towards the goal line and a great tackle by Danny Reynolds. I mean, a corner kick for Wake Forest. It was England versus England then. Danny Reynolds from Shilton, England. The spry thunder is all queued up. Hand is raised. Corner bending, trying to get to that near post. Could have curved in. Well played by Louisville that headed out. The graph and right. Change fields. Moving around in the back. Wake Forest taking off that pressure. They hold on to a 1 0 lead. Here with about 27 minutes left to go in the first half. Done well. 
cleared by Raven. Raff and Wright will let it go out of bounds for a throw in. Long ball looking for Tate Schmidt. Chasing is Rabin. And Schmidt comes out with it. Louisville now with a shot, but a grounder right into the midst of Farrell. A shot by Emilio Hernandez, the junior from Maryland. Started last year, all 22 matches. Here's the shot. Trying to put a little worm burner, but he's going to need more pace than that to get past Farrell. Hernandez competed for the El Salvador at the 2015 CONCACAF Under-20 Championships back in January. Coach Moose used Reeves in the midfield. Now he goes back to his normal spot in the back. He's got the endurance to play all 110 yards. Marks with a 1-2 back to Dunwell. Schmidt, the lone man up front for Louisville. A blazer right to Harrison. Harrison was able to put a nice touch on it and settle it, but lost it. And he turned in the corner, pushes it inside. Nice little lay off to Bacaro, but he's going to be flagged for offside. Trying to head it out. Pushes it over to Partain. The camera comes back out and he picks his pocket. He's one on one. Trying to get inside the 18. Just got, got out in front of him. Jamio is able to scoop it up. The replay is Pacero trying to figure out where he wanted to go. He decided to keep it to himself. And great defense by Kunkel, the sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, to put his body in front of Bacaro, enable him to get to the ball. 1-0, Wake Forest up. A goal by Jack Harrison. Now Harrison leads the Deeks and goals with eight. Bacaro with seven. A little miscommunication there, and Louisville comes out with it. He's going to use his support. Great pressure by Wake Forest, and now they get the possession back. Oz with plenty of real estate. Nice oiled machine by Coach Muse. This Wake Forest team in his first year as head coach as Wake Forest has been a phenomenal, phenomenal start. Number one in all the land, number one in the ACC. Harrison checks into space. McKellar with a 1-2, looking for Hayes. Harrison settles, see if he has a go, and it's just off to the left. Didn't like how that came off his foot. Partain scored a goal about the same distance that Friday night. 
on October 30th on that season finale at Louisville. I think it even shocked Partain when it got to the back of the net. Jamuja looking for Reynolds. Looks like the wind took that as it goes out of bounds for a Wake Forest throw in. Hayes right into space, going to keep it himself. He's going to take a shot and a nice ripped shot. But a save by Tio Jamulo. This is right in the wheelhouse in which Hayes likes to have a go. And that's now six shots for the Deeks so far. Coming out about 20 minutes left to go in the first half. Louisville with only two. A huge save by Bandy. Louisville's inside the box and a beautiful tackle. Took away the chance and the opportunity for Louisville to get the equalizer. Strong pushes over to the right side. Andrew Grody. Now Strong. Hernandez. Reynolds. Reynolds putting one deep into the 18. And... Farrell read that perfectly. So he came out of off his line to pick it up. Dunwell now moving it himself, pushes it to the other side to Bandy. Partain. all the way here at the touchline trying to spread the field trying to go inside to Baccaro Baccaro couldn't get a boot on it and a roll right into the hands of Jamillo the Deeks were picked to finish third in the Atlantic Division Louisville was picked Number one. Deeks know all about that. The Harrison gets tripped up. We have a foul on Johnson. Now 44 goals for the Deeks on the season. Only nine against. Nice one-two play by Harrison and Harts. Harrison puts it over to Partain. Partain in the box. Let's see if he takes a shot. Bad angle, but he was looking for Baccaro. Was sitting right there. They're going to give you hats off to the freshman goalkeeper them. Able to read that. Martin took away that angle, but Baccaro was making a nice run. And almost got ahead on it. Entering the game for Louisville, number 23, Shane Campbell. He replaces number 10, Ben Strong. So Shane Tane Campbell comes in for Louisville, Tane and Tane, Tane Gint, a New Zealander, will check in for Baccaro. Two international players. A nice luxury to have someone like Tane Gint to come off the bench for Wake Forest. Gamble will not see any playing time today. He's injured from the Georgia State game. Hopefully he'll be back if indeed 
They move on to the semifinals. The Deeks averaging almost four goals per game since that Carolina game. They won one nil. And then that pushed them eventually to that number one spot in the nation. Raven reading it. Well done as he heads it right over to Dunwell. Dunwell will play it back to him. Louisville not putting any kind of pressure on Wake Forest's back line. And you'd think they would put some kind of pressure on Raven and somewhat of Hawes. Hawes got slotted into that starting role this season and has done a phenomenal job. But Raven, the freshman, usually is the one that the opponents will attack. 7 shots for the Deeks, only 2 for Louisville, Louisville sitting there at 2, so the Deacons back line has done a great job keeping them away from sh taking shots at Farrell. Going long, Harrison too much as Reynolds will let that go out of bounds for a throw in. And Harrison waves off to Reeves saying a good idea, just a little too much. Entering the game for Louisville, number 11, Sawyer Edwards. He replaces number 22, Tate Schmidt. Oh, Schmidt will come out of the game. Looks like he was a little slow. Might be nursing some kind of injury. And Sawyer Edwards will check in the ball game for him, the sophomore. Long throw. Reynolds will head it over to Johnson, and Johnson lost it. Parks by himself, now moves it over to the left side. Slotting it through too much for Partain, and read it very well. I'm not sure he was expecting that immediately. Long ball played by Louisville. Looks like Echeverry is going to come in for Partain. Here shortly. It's the clock now. Just below 14 minutes left to go in the first half. Dangerous idea for Reeves to play over that left side, considering there were two red jerseys there. Here comes Louisville now on the attack. Johnson calling for it inside the 18. Little miscommunication, and Farrell is right there. As he'll take his time. Holding on to that 1-0 lead for Wake Forest. Little floater right to Harrison and over the head of Harrison and Reynolds for a throw in for Louisville. This just in on the other actually an ACC championship play. Syracuse on top of Carolina 1-0. They went ahead early in that first matchup between them and Chapel Hill. We'll be closely monitoring other scores going on. Right now there's a foul, I believe, on number eight. He's got his card in his hand. That's Hernandez. He's gonna give it he's gonna give it to Gaten, Jack Gaten, a sophomore from Peach City, Georgia. Louisville yellow card, number five. Jack Played for Real Salt Lake in the U.S. Soccer Development Academy from 2012 to 2014. So first card given 
It's to the Louisville Cardinals. And a free kick awarded to Lake Forest. Officials today is Fotos Pequeros. Excuse me, it's Bezakos. Official Bazakos is going to cold time and talk to the players a little bit more. Raven going for the long ball, looking for Hayes, but too much pepper on that is the graph and right able to play it out. Here comes Brody. Brody still with the ball. Not sure exactly where he was going, but Wake comes back out with it. Now to Bandy. Part team. We'll go out of bounds, and I think Echeverria now is getting ready to come in for Partain. Looks like Partain was getting a little slowed down a little bit. Maybe fatigue is playing a factor in his playing ability. Hawks now inside the middle. Under 11 minutes to play in the first half. Lake Forest up 1-0 over Louisville. Here in the quarterfinal matchup. Tane calling for it. Nice little back hill looking for Tane. And get now inside the Hawks. Hawks with a shot. The flag is up. And the fans are upset with it. I believe they're going to call it on Hawks. We'll check the replay. Looks like Hawks had a little bit, a bit more position out in front of that defensive back line. Yeah. It's tough to see from that angle. But the Deeks have been knocking at the door all during this first half with tremendous passing inside that 18. chemistry of this team is hands down phenomenal. They just know exactly where they're going to be. Parks. A foul on Louisville. Another free kick. And he's going to have a chat. Yeah, I knew that was coming. A chat with Sawyer Edwards. I believe he said something Smart to the referee, and the referee is not going to like that. Fotis Azakos brings him over. Yeah, he said a little something on his way, way back. You don't really say that near the referee. Deeks have been down here most of the first half. So you could definitely say that they're winning the possession battle and a foul again on Sawyer. Sawyer Edwards, this is what happens. You've already got a bullseye on you by the referee. So you have to be extra, extra careful. In this case, another call on Sawyer, and a little shove in the back. So Sawyer Edwards, two fouls on him, a hooking ball, and into the midst of Jamuyo. Entering the game for the finals, number 15, John Zabazaja. He replaces number 7, Andrew Brody. 
Odie goes out of the game for the Louisville Cardinals. Echeverria now slotted in, takes the place of Partain. Partain looked like he got a little tired there towards the end because he knew kind of what kind of speed he has. But again, the luxury of what Bobby Muse has here, Echeverria is a phenomenal talent to have to come off the bench for sure. And also Ricky Greensfelder who was the hero last year when Wake Forest beat Louisville a regular season in that dramatic fashion. Hayes is not aware of Johnson right there. And Johnson's going to move it all the way. And Hayes with great pressure. Deflected off, it'll be a quarter kick for Louisville. Dunbar will take the corner for Wake Forest. You see Reeves all the way down inside the 18. Laban is also down there. Bandy comes back and plays almost like the safety position. But that's a very right in front of him. So they're going all out here on this corner kick. Reeves makes his run. The service. Greensfelder. Push it back over to Bandy. Long ball. Hayes pushes to Dunwell. See if Dunwell takes a rip. And he tried to push it back to Hayes. Had an open window for a shot. I'll call the foul on Raven. Little push off there. So Louisville will be awarded a free kick. with only two seniors, 10 juniors, nine sophomores, and eight freshmen. There's Dunmore's on the ground. And a top five recruiting class coming in this year. Dunwell. He was a part of that class. Oz calls for it. Hayes making a run here on that right side. Hayes using his magic. Right at the touchline. Puts it across. Looking for Gint. Gint with a chance for the 50-50 ball. But plays it safe. And lets T.O. Jamilio take it. And a nice play here for Wake Forest as Hayes put it right in the mouth of the goal. Raven just plays it out. Under five minutes left to go in the first half. Wake with a goal by Jack Harrison is the storyline so far. Reynolds with a long throw. I look for Edwards there to flick it on. And he had a bad touch. Louisville, see if they take advantage of it. Now Farrell's just going to kick it all the way down to this ACC logo. Deeks have kept Louisville quiet on the shot sheet. Johnson. Johnson keeping it with them. Moving inside looking for Sawyer Edwards. Reynolds. Graffin right with a one toucher there out to the right side. Oh. 
Louisville will try to find the equalizer. Left side is Reynolds. Right off the knee of Halls. It'll be a corner kick for Louisville. Has spent six players inside the 18. Now that five is John Tabuzaja is into the game for Louisville. And a great save by Farrell. Well played by Louisville using it for that back door. But this is what Farrell does so well for this Deacon team. The Deacons are unhappy with the way that almost went down. Way curling just phenomenal. Farrell just has these great instincts. Another beautiful save by the keeper. Looking for the long throw. Reynolds. Reynolds calling for everybody down in the 18. Long throw. And another corner awarded to Louisville. That should be corner kick number four for the Cardinals. Quick for just with only three. Here's the corner. Bending again towards the near stick, but Farrell is all over it. One minute. Sorry, Edwards not happy with Farrell falling down. A long ball played by Farrell. Trying to use the speed of Greensfelder and Echeverria. Hawks oh, now looking nice little play to Harks. Harks a little too much towards Echeverria. Hayes. Checked on Halls. We'll go inside the middle. Ooh, and a tangled up play there. Dunwell hit the ground. Not sure if that was any malice behind that. I think it was one of those just off timed plays. And the Dunwell is aching. He hit the ground pretty hard. Let's see if you see the replay here. Yeah, and maybe you could you could argue a little late on that challenge. Looks like he might have hit knees. That does not feel very well, especially when the temperature is a little cold, like it is this afternoon. Still check on Dunwell. Other scores going on right now. Clemson on top of Boston College, 1-0. That's right there. I am told now there will not be a foul called yet. Just two knees hitting each other. That is a terrible feeling. I know from experience. And the first half of quarterfinals matchup between Virginia and Notre Dame that is tied 0-0 as over in South Bend the winner will take on the winner of this matchup it's done well still being looked on like he'd be all right just a little slow walking with some help this is one of those stingers that you just have to let it go you know here itself so he'll take a breather take a seat with the 20 seconds left to go in the first half Wake Forest up 1-0 Dunwell heads to the sideline And 
And it's Odin Beck of Georgetown, transfers from Charlotte, North Carolina, and replaced Dunwell. Odin Beck had a phenomenal goal against Georgia State. With Ten seconds left to go in the first half. The countdown down down to five, four, three, two, one, and that. It's the first half for their score, 1-0, Wake Forest on top of Louisville. They head to the locker room, we'll be back with stats and all that good stuff coming up. You're watching WakeForestSports.com. Full job, moving around the ball, keeping possession, and using some opportunities. Even though up 1-0, the world could have been 3-0, Wake Forest. Wake Forest will kick things off here with Hayes. And Becaro right there at the center of the circle. Over to Bandy. And Reeves again on that left side. Harrison now with eight goals on the season, 11 assists. Phenomenal talent from England. Has done a fantastic job seeing the field. You wouldn't imagine he's a freshman. Pause. Looking for Harrison. Harrison trapped there at that touch line, and Louisville comes back out with it. Pair with some pressure on the graphic right. Partain going to start the second half. He was taken out and replaced by Echeverria. But Bobby Mews likes the kind of energy he brings to this team. So 2-1 back on the field for Wake Forest. And Bandy. Going long for Partain, but too far out in front. <laughs> Stovall now gets the throw in. <laughs> Harrison reading it nicely, almost came back out with it. Here comes Johnson. Cardinals looking to try to find the equalizer down here, 1-0. With a little bit more energy as they did in the first half. Barté moving right to the middle. Dunwell now using the right side. This is Hawes. Hawes chipping it, looking for Harrison. Becaro now giving chase inside the 18, but then cleared by the keeper. Flag is up for the on Becaro, but Cardinals will just push it out. And then he blew it off. Carroll got the flag on him. As Chamillo is going to pick it up and give it a ride. Trying to find someone to come to. Looks for Strong, was going to go for a long one. This is Schmidt. There's another one touch. With a little loop over to Harks. Harks playing the right side flank. Harrison able to get back that touch at a first 
first touch wasn't so great, but able to get it back out to Partain. Partain puts one inside the 18, looking for Hayes just over his head. Had the right idea. Long ball, right to Raven. knocking it around. Gaten to Kunkel. Possession back to Wake Forest. Hayes calling for it, looking for a through ball. But Harks played it a smart way, pushed it over to the right side. Now Harrison going to try to beat him with his feet. He's tripped up looking for a call. And I'm going to say go kick. Harrison tried to sell it well. Tried to beat him to that goal line. He's chatting with the AR on that side saying, need some kind of call there. So yeah, it looks like I didn't even touch the ball. Got tripped up, but there'll be a goal kick. Regardless, Mike Forrest sitting on this 1-0 lead because of that man, number 22, Jack Harrison. Last year went two to one in overtime. And that was in a regular season and the hero was Ricky Greensfeller. Free kick for Louisville, foul on Wake. Going long ball. Farrell comes up and meets it. A quickly roll it over to Harks. Harks with plenty of real estate. Kara making a run. Well, holding down that back line. He was selected as ACC Freshman of the Year from Stuttgart, Germany. Well played by Brody. Brody's going to keep it into the middle. Switches fields. We we're trying to orchestrate some kind of an attack here. Here comes the Dukes back out with it. Arms got tangled up with Partain, but it actually worked out well for him. He just laid it off to him. Vaccaro. Hayes with a run. Timed it perfectly. Able to tap it back, see if Vaccaro gets it. He's going to take a shot in just over the crossbar. You, you got you to gotta give kudos to what kind of great run Hayes did, just timed it perfectly. Just again, another credit to the kind of chemistry they have. Just watch the time run. Slots it right through and the speed of Hayes able to keep it. He's kind of looking for someone to go that far stick because it's a very tough angle. He tried to bend it just a little too high as it hit the ceiling, the top of the ceiling of the goal. Eight shots for the Deeks. Louisville still sitting at three. Little volley by Kubel. Brody looking for Tate. Tate Schmidt. The freshman. Along with 
T.A. Jamillo, the transfer from Florida Atlantic. Tate's brother played, pre played professionally for the Phoenix FC in the USL Pro League. Bandy. Uh, Dunbar back, as you remember, the first half ended with him being shaken up as his knees hit to the Louisville player. Had to get taken off the field. The flag is up. I'm not sure. I believe he's going to call the offside call on Becaro. Long ball flipped on. No one really there. Done well with a nice header there. Going up against the 50-50 ball with Tate Schmidt. Strong, a nice turn. Trying to lay it off to Strong from Schmidt. But Oz read it all the way. Still quote scoreless in South Bend. 0-0. Zero, zero. Brody lays it off. Reynolds couldn't get his footing right. And it'll be out of bounds on Lake Forest for a Louisville throw it. Looking for the long throw inside the 18. A very dangerous weapon for Louisville. A shot right. That two hopper right to fail. And a great save by Alec Farrell. Here's the replay again. Nothing like a good weapon of a long throw in. Just put it right in the sweet spot of his boot, but Farrell was right there to collect the two hopper. Foul on Louisville. Wake Forest unbeaten streak to 11 games in a row streak in the first double digit unbeaten streak since Wake Forest put together a streak of 24 games unbeaten from 2007 to 2008. Also the 10th unbeaten streak of double digits in program history and only five streaks have gone longer than 11 games. Martin. McCarroll lost it. Got his pocket got picked by Johnson. And a muffed kick. Partain looking for Becaro making the run. Timing it perfectly. Well done by Partain. Just out in front of him. And he lost it. He got through two Louisville defenders. Was looking to put a chip shot right over to Becaro. A well played by that Louisville defense. Close passing between Bandy and Partain. Gate will now move it over to the left side of the pitch. Yeah, throw in a water to Wake. Hawks again with plenty of space. I would have figured out where he wants to go with it. Flag is up. Not sure about that one. Looks like he timed it proper. I don't think Becaro is happy with that call either. Let's see the replay. And then he had about a foot over. A correct call by the sideline judge. Mm -hmm. 
Little misplay. Let's see if Bakira makes him pay. He does. Comes back out with it. Not sure exactly what Kubel wanted to do with it. And Partain. Partain couldn't get it to the right as it was taken away by Louisville. But great pressure from Bacaro. The sophomore from Spain. Planted Dunwell. Bandy was calling for it. He had plenty of space over on the left side. Reeves checking to Portain. Portain. Turns. A right, foul on Louisville, and I believe that is. That's Rubio Hernandez from Maryland. We'll call their fans upset with it as Hayes went down. Here comes Ben Strong. Cuts in, looking for Brody. He was calling for it on this right side. Gaten out of Brody. Brody looks for the service. Low driven ball. I believe he was looking for Tate Schmidt right there hanging out in front of the goalie box. Under 30 minutes left to go in this one. Great still up 1-0. Only goal of this match was by Jack Harrison early in the first half. But the Deeks have had plenty of opportunities and I'm sure Coach Mills is not happy with the execution by this Wake Forest team in this particular half. But the Deeks are controlling. Well stepped by Raven. Looks like Brody will be slotted to go out for Louisville. Off of Schmidt. Uses his support with Reeves. Reeves wanted to go long. He looked at Harrison. I don't think Harrison saw it at all. Trying to make that play. Here comes Hayes. Hayes using his magic. Slots it to Becquera. Becquera right inside the box. Does he get it? And hits the side of the net. But on the other side, well played by the two over there with Hayes and Becquero. He just took one too many touches. And the angle was taken away. Here's the replay. Number 11, Put his body right there and just took away that tart angle. You almost want to put it to your left foot and use it at the side of the net, just the wrong side of the net. Very close to putting the deeks up 2 0. Tate Schmidt with great skill will get the call as he hit the turf. Alon Wake and a free kick awarded to Louisville. Carolina now has tied the game 1 1 against Syracuse. And Clemson up 2 0 on Boston College. Bell. No news from South Bend. Long drifter into the hands of Fell. Fell takes his time. Cardinals now put two shots on since half. So now they're at number f at five on the game. Schmidt cuts in, lost it. There comes White back with it, Echeverria. Bandy goes into space and they'll use him. 
Nice touch by Hayes. Able to make the turn inside the 18. Stuck will use his support to Bandy. We'll see if Bandy puts it into the box. He puts it. Uh, thing curved. Knuckled. Harrison able to keep it. Going against two. Puts it inside the 18, but then cleared. I believe that's to Graffin Wright. Another close, close chance. Puts Blake now with 10 shots on the game. He has such great poise. It's hard to imagine that he's right there in the 18 and able to be so calm. Reeves will play Bandy. Bandy Harrison over there on that far right just creeping. Carroll wrapped his foot around. And with a touch it. His foot around Kunkel. And Deke still with possession. A little chipper for Harrison. Harrison flicks it back to himself. Nice move and a good shot by Harrison. Might as well let him have a go. He did a lot of work to get to that particular point. Deeks back on the attack. Flag is up, but Karen knew it. He was offside. Just missed time his run. It's way out in front this time, so correct call. McKellar knows it. Free kick for Louisville. Under 24 minutes left to go in this one. Score 1-0 Wake Forest. Nice so dangerous ball. Farrell punches it out. And looks like Schmidt is on the ground. Farrell's checking on him, and so is Raven. Here's the replay. It's a very good ball and a very dangerous ball. Trying to put it right up for a 50-50 ball between him and Farrell. Good news for Farrell. He's allowed to use his hand, so he's able to knock it out. So Schmidt is up. Looks like he'll be going to the sideline. They'll make a substitution. Let's see, it's number, the number 16, Ricardo Aleveros. Another freshman for this Louisville team. Boston College from also in the second half, Syracuse one. Good one touch passing by Wake Forest. Reeves. Bandy. Hawks got tripped up. Looking for a call. But G just now was not aware that there was a Louisville defender right on his back pocket. Harrison. Keeps it himself between three Louisville defenders. Trying to cut into the middle who will get a free kick. And immediately over to challenge that call is Reynolds. Very upset with the referee for making that call. He's not great. Does go for the card. And he does. He gives it to number eight. That is Emilio Hernandez. So another, call give, another card given to the Cardinals. Let's see this again. It's tough when you got three red jerseys here. He tries to cut the... Yep, that is a foul. And as soon as you cut him, you're not playing the ball. He played the player. That is a free kick for Wake Forest. So the right call by the official, despite the protest by the Louisville Cardinals. I have about seven Deacons. Six Deacons down there in the 18. Louisville yellow card, number eight, remember. 
Cristo Hernandez. That's just four, five Deacons inside the 18. Harks looks like he's going to take it, or it's Harrison. Harrison chips it. The header right off one of the Louisville defenders. It'll be a shot given to Jack Harrison. Nice little pop-up for Jamillo to catch it. Harry Hayes calling for it. Graffin right, let it trickle in to the freshman hands. Reynolds couldn't link up properly and Wake Forest took it away from him. This one will go Thought it was going to go out of bounds, but Louisville kept it in, I believe. And they're going to call a throw in. Dunmore lays it off to Harks. Cardinals with it right in the midfield and a whistle blown foul on Wake Forest. We were searching for that equalizer. Diggs have had plenty of opportunities to make this a 2-0 lead, but have failed to do so. Inside the 18, Farrell there makes the catch. It's a catch with his body, but again, another dangerous ball as it dipped right there in front of him. Looking for that header to flick it on. Parks with his hands up calling for it. Has plenty of real estate. He wants him to use him. Dunwell finally uses him. Hayes checking into space. He's going to make a run. Echeverria. A foul on Echeverria. A little late on that challenge. And the call will be a foul on Echeverria. Now the Tigers well ahead of the Eagles of Boston College. 3-0. The score just told to me. Still 0-0, Virginia, Notre Dame, and South Bend. And they're in the 64th minute over there. Free kick in a dangerous spot for the Cardinals. Referee will mark off 10. Fotis Pazakos, the referee, has done a phenomenal job keeping control of this game. It's dangerous, and it is in the back of the net, and has tied it up. One boy, and I believe that is number 24. That's Joey Kunkel, the sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. So we've got a tie game here with 18 minutes left to play. Here's the replay. Dangerous kick. 
flick on and just got to the back door. And Kunkel was right there. Raven defended it very nicely, but just a little too late. Now the game is tied 1-1. 18 minutes left to go. Hayes. Hayes keeps it, flicks it over to Becquera. Becquera trying to put it up. He's going to say hi. Oh, he's going to call a free kick for Wake Forest. Thought they might call a high kick on Becquero. Little John back and forth. Between Ricardo and Leveros. Jack Harrison and Hartz. Let's see what they can do with this free kick. Bender right around looking for Reeves. Reeves got a little shove, but no call and into the hands of the keeper. Hawks uses his body to get the possession. Cardinals come back out with it. Looking for the through ball. Reeves having trouble playing it. Able to get it over to Bandy. Bandy immediately to Hayes. Hayes tried to make the turn and couldn't. Johnson. Oh, they're going to call it. That's a tough one to call because it looked like it was a little later on the flop there, but free kick awarded to Louisville and another dangerous spot. Reynolds will take it. Danny Reynolds, the freshman from England. Puts a little bending on it, but right into the hands of Farrell. Farrell quickly out. Trying to push the ball, but he's going to step back and just roll it over to Raven. Arks. Looking for the through ball. Flag stays down. Hayes, overlapping run by Bandy. Two bump behind him. Vicero. Cuts into the middle and try to push it over to Harrison. Inside looking for Echeverria. Out come the Cardinals with it. Fifteen minutes left to play in this one. All tied up, 1-1. One, one. Cardinals got the equalizer from a goal from Joey Kunkel. Last year he was a key member just of the practice squad, and here he is tying the game up. Wake Forest on the attack. Dangerous Jack Harrison gets tri tripped up, and the flag is up and they will get a free kick. Just the replays. Jack Harrison is a player that's so tough to defend. You just have no idea where he's gonna go with it. And you just kinda throw your feet out there and usually end up tripping him up. Echeverria hiding out right there on that back stick. Hayes right at top of the 18. Free kick, bending it far stick. Looking for Raven. Raven puts it right inside the six. Almost had it laid. Here comes, had it laid it up perfectly for Becaro. Becaro gives him props. He knew where he was going. But that was a well-designed play, having Raven Head it right down towards that penalty marker. We've seen the, this, this Deacon team do that before. 
He was looking for, for Echeverria. I thought he was looking for Becaro, but, but Echeverria was about a foot away from it. And there's another corner kick. Wake looking for the go-ahead goal. They play it short. Harrison lost the ball, but brought it right back. It'll be a goal kick. Upset with himself. Ran out of real estate. A goal kick for Louisville. 13 minutes now left to play. In the 71st minute, still 0-0. Tied over there in South Bend. Tied here. Now in the game for Louisville, number 10, Strong. He replaces number 16, Ricardo Oliveira. Ben Strong, the in first team All-ACC, comes back into the ball game for Louisville. And Tate Schmidt also back into the ball game. Louisville into the round the 18. Surprised that Hernandez was able to get that far. Long ball, deep, headed by Kunkel. Brody. Gaten will take it way outside. I'm going to say it deflected off a Wake Forest player for a corner. Last goal by Louisville was the 10th allowed goal by Wake Forest this whole season, just to show you what kind of defense this Deacon team has. Here's a corner, low, driven, dangerous inside the 18. Kicked out. The graphing, the graphing right, right there. Kubel was calling for it. It's going to look for the long ball, looking for Tate. Schmidt. Hearts. So if they switch fields, they do. Hawes make a little bit of run for it to control it. And possession goes back to Louisville. To Graffenwright, going for the long run, looking for Schmidt. Schmidt played in front of his Raven, and let a trickle out for a throw in. Under 10 minutes to play. Now Bandy. Nice turn by Harrison. Harrison puts on the burners right there towards the touchline. Fell down. Louisville comes back out with it. Done well. Partain. Johnson jockeying him. Nice play to Partain. Partain slots it right over this to Bandy. Bandy does it keep it in. He doesn't. That was a tough ball, but a good idea by Hart. Played him right here on this left side. That was too much on it. He couldn't get it. That'll be a throw in for Wake Forest. Bandy quickly decided to try to go to Harks, but won't. 
I don't know how he got that to Hawks, but he did. Partain with a shot, looking for upper 90 and over the crossbar. Looked like he had a nice touch on it. A little too high. There's the replay. It's amazing how Baccaro was able to get that two arcs and Partain just a little too high. Baccaro digs back with possession, lays it off to Partain. A chain slowly guarded by Johnson, and Johnson got in front of it and made a nice defensive play to get the ball back. Long ball. Played by Raven. Parks. Spry fans giving the Deeks some encouragement. They lost it. Here comes Louisville. Johnson keeping it on his feet. Uh, he split two defenders. Wakes looks a little tired. It's Johnson over the split. Two wake defenders. Brody. And on cue is the hero from last year, Ricky Greensfather. He checks in for part ten. He's known for his heroics, and he's familiar with this team, the Louisville Cardinals. He comes in for the Deeks. Here with about 6.20 left to play. And our attendance today, 2,189. And that does break the previous record of 29,296. So congratulations to all you Soccer fans out there for coming out to Spry and breaking a record. We'll see if the Deeks can get a game winner. Fans giving the Deeks some energy. Raven to Hawes. Harrison lost his footing and also lost the ball. Louisville, here takes a rip and off to the right. I believe that was Sawyer. Edwards is back into the ball game for Louisville. Like just moving the ball around, still plenty of time with about five minutes left. Greensfelder, the fresh legs. The window closed really quickly. As that was Zabuzija. It was checked back into the ball game for Louisville. Nice one touch there to Harrison. Harrison trying to find Baccaro, but Harrison comes back out with it. Uses his magic. Baccaro over to Greensfelder. Could this be it? Inside the 18, inside the 6, and could not play it. As Tio Janillo lost the ball that was in his hands. And Greensfelder was sitting right there on that left side inside the 18. 
Here's the replay again. Nice timed run by Greensfelder. And all he was trying to do was put it right there for Baccaro. Another shot is now with four minutes left to go. And regulation. Good job by the guys in the truck and our camera guys with the highlights and the instant replay. On a cold November afternoon. The graph and right. Mike comes out with it. 3.30 left. Hayes. Try Bandy. Bandy slots it to Greensfelder. Greensfelder cuts inside, lost it. I got it back. Reeves right there to back up Dunwell. Looking for Harks. Harks slotting it. Try to, try to find Bacaro. Had the right idea. Under three minutes. Be off strong and a goal kick awarded to Wake Forest. It was awfully close here in the 78th minute. Virginia and Notre Dame still tied 0 0. And we're tied here 1 1. With two minutes left to go. Done well. Greensfellers creeping right here on this left line all the way to the touch line. Hawes checks into place. Harrison was calling for it. Not sure who was going for it, so we, Harrison will take it. Out of Becaro. Becaro being guarded by Graf and Wright. And Graf and Wright beat him on the speed category there. Down to 107. One minute. Now one minute remains. See if the Deeks have one last fight in them before the end of regulation. Put on the turf. Not exactly what Greensfield will want, but he's going to fight for it to get it right back. Bandy. Bacaro calling for it. Let's see where Bandy goes with it. Lost control. It was going to play it to his support with Dunwell. 35 seconds left. Well, we'll go out of bounds. We're going to quickly get this in as the clock now down to 25. Dunwell. 17 seconds. Ship looking for Bacaro. 11 seconds, that should be a corner kick quickly, they're going to have to get this in with 7 seconds, 6 seconds, 5 seconds, 4 seconds, it's in, the goal, most a goal, just on that far stick, they played it just in time, and it looked like they had it, the connection right, but they go to the end of regulation, we'll take a break for 5 minutes, we'll come back the first 10 minutes of an overtime period, then they'll take another break, and then they'll have a second overtime period of 10 minutes. If there's no goal there, we will go to penalty kicks. Speaking of penalty kicks, I believe the Carolina-Syracuse game is in penalty kicks as we speak. But the score also still tied with about the 83rd minute in South Bend, 0-0. Zero zero. Wake Forest got awfully close of
winning this with about six seconds left. But it's a tie ball game, and Wake Forest will take a break for about five minutes and come back for the first session of overtime. Stick with us, and we'll be right back. You're listening and watching WakeForestSports.com. And we're off and ready to go for the first session of overtime. If you remember, last year was Wake Forest winning 1-0 in overtime by Ricky Greensorter of four minutes in. And he's on the pitch for Wake Forest now. We get to Hayes. Hayes gets tripped up. He's looking for a card. He's going to get one. He's upset with that. So they're going to give the card to Tim Kubel, the sophomore from Germany. Long ball inside the 18. Greensfelder's there. He puts it right at the 6 and almost a touch in by Becaro. Becaro says good look. I think that boots the confidence of these Deeks. Kind of looked like they were falling down on themselves after allowing that equalizing goal. Reeves trying to play Hayes. Done well. Hayes able to push it over to Harks. Harks looking for Harrison. Harrison, the dangerous freshman, gets by one. Keeps it himself, puts it over to Hayes. Hayes in an awkward angle here. Going to chip it for Becaro. Becaro with one touch, trying to set it up for a volley, but he couldn't get it on a platter. Greensfelder calling for it. Landy will play him. Greensfelder puts putting it inside the 18. This time volley by Louisville. That was Gaten. Andy. Harrison, a very good touch there, and lost it to go out of bounds. A Louisville throw in, a long throw in, because Reynolds will do the honors. Greensfelder. Chip looking for Hayes. Hayes makes the turn, puts one inside the 18, looking for Becaro again, and well played by the Graffin right up and up, headed out. But it'll be a quarter for Wake Forest with about seven minutes left to play in the first overtime. Andy will take it. Nobody there to play short. Harrison makes his run. The service. A little too low and kicked out by Louisville. Done well. Hayes. Right to Harks. Harks with a chance for a game winner. Looking for a call. Won't get it. Harks looks shaken up. It's almost as if he got hit in the chest. And the fans are not happy with that. His chest, it looked like he couldn't get his balance. Here's the replay. A little chip here. Oh yeah, just, just got tripped up. Well played by Greensfelder. Looking for the service. Puts it low. Looking for Hayes. Red jersey right in front. Here comes Bandy now with the service inside the 18. 
Seems that Louisville knows where the ball is and Wake is still trying to find it. Harrison takes it himself. There to Greensfelder. Can he be the winner again? Here's the shot and goal! Wake Forest has done it again in overtime. In dramatic fashion, the Deeks get the win 2-1 to one over Louisville. And there they jump on the wall at the great Walt Chiselwitz Alumni Hill. <laughs> you know, it, it's better written in the script, but you can't write this thing up. Greensfelder made this thing happen again.